I greet all the listeners and our host in the mighty name of Jesus. Have a wonderful, blessed day. This is Pastor Itani Madima from Limpopo Kingdom Restoration Church in Toyando, Marude Village. Allow me to continue with our subject. Last week, we are addressing the issue of the old versus the new covenant. And we are continuing on the same subject. Why is this subject necessary? This is necessary because today in the body of Christ, there is a lot of explaining we need to do around this subject because people are confused and they're asking a lot of questions concerning this. When you go all over social media today, you'll find a lot of questions about this subject, particularly about the law versus grace, the old versus the new covenant. This subject has always been the elephant in the room. People have been tiptoeing around it, avoiding to tackle it or to address it. But I think recently it has gone to boiling point. We can't afford to ignore it any longer. We need to address it. Let's go into our subject. Today I'm talking particularly about knowing God. Our scripture reading is from the book of Hebrews chapter 8. They will know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. This is the promise of the new covenant. It's not just those who are considered great in the kingdom who will know God. Yes, they will know me. Who are they? The believers, the children of God. This is the promise of the new covenant to all the children of God. Not just the greatest in the kingdom, but even the least of them, the Bible makes a promise to us. They will know me from the very least of them. Under the old covenant, not every Tom, Dick, and Harry would know the Lord. You had to be one of the chosen few like Moses, Joshua, to know the Lord. This is why as soon as Moses ascended the mountain to have a meeting with God on the mountain, The rest of the people got impatient and made a golden calf to worship because they did not know God. Moses was their middleman. He's the one who talked to God. He's the one who came into the presence of God. He's the one who brought their issues to God and he's the one who reported back to them. God promised to change that hierarchy in the new covenant, under the new covenant. He said, all my children under the new covenant will know me from the very least of them. So this is not a status thing. This is not a title thing. This is not a rank thing. This is a promise to all the children of God. They will know me from the very least of them. Under the old covenant, it was only the privileged few who could know God who could even come into the presence of God, who could even hear the voice of God. Today we still have leaders who keep giving their followers the impression that they are the only ones who know God and the rest of God's children must hear from them. That is not the promise of the new covenant. Everyone is privileged to know God under the new covenant from the very least of them. You don't have to have a title to hear from God. You don't have to have a rank to hear from God. No one is supposed to know God on behalf of others. Knowing God is a personal encounter. It's not a group thing. No one is supposed to charge consultation fees for approaching God on behalf of others. No one is supposed to be a mediator between God and man except Jesus Christ himself. No one is supposed to deny others the experience of knowing God for themselves. In the Old Covenant, priests went to the Holy of Holies to make sacrifices on behalf of others. In the New Covenant, Jesus went to the throne of God once and for all on behalf of all of us. Because of that sacrifice, everyone is supposed to know God for themselves. John 10, 27 to 28, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Christ alone is our high priest. We don't need another priest to go to God on our behalf. Christ is more than enough for us. He has done all that needs to be done for our redemption. He has done all the reconciliation that is needed between us and God. 
Let's read from Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. It says, Therefore, since we have a high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us therefore approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in times of need. According to this scripture, we need to enter boldly into the throne of grace, not apologetically. Brothers and sisters, we do have a high priest. We are not looking for a high priest. Christ alone is our middleman. This high priest that we've been given under the new covenant is the best because he knows our weaknesses. He came to this planet earth and he lived like you and me. He knows every challenge on this planet. He knows every difficulty in this planet. He knows every temptation. The Bible says he has been tempted in every way that we are. You and me cannot complain about a temptation that is so big that our high priest cannot represent us against. He has seen it all. He has been here on planet Earth. He knows how rough this planet is. What caused you to sin is not an excuse. Christ has been through it. This is really liberating. The Bible says when we approach the throne of grace with confidence... We will receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We cannot have confidence when we are condemned. We cannot come in confidence when we are despised, when we feel insignificant before God, when we feel we are not good enough, when we feel we are not welcomed in the throne of God. Good people, I want to assure you there is help in your time of need. There is mercy when you need mercy. The Bible says, surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Have you realized that in the Gospels, there's not even one single person who came to Jesus and did not find help? There is help in times of need. Before you go consulting anywhere, before you look for a representative to talk to God on your behalf, before you go and pay any consultation fees, Come to the throne of grace. You are invited and you are welcome. You have a high priest. We have a high priest. And it says, come boldly. Come with confidence. Come by faith, knowing that you are accepted in the presence of God. Let me ask you a question. That problem that you have, have you really talked to God about it? Did you approach the throne of grace about that? Did you make your issue known to God? This high priest of ours is sitting on the right hand of the Father, right there in the throne of God. He's waiting for us to bring our issues. He's waiting for us to bring our prayer requests. He's waiting to represent us to the Father. So don't be afraid. Come boldly. All the fivefold ministries are important and they have their place in the body of Christ, but they don't replace the direct connection we have with God. Each one of us is supposed to have a personal relationship with God. No office in the fivefold ministry is supposed to replace that relationship. Can I ask you this question? Do you know God? I'm not asking if you have seen him because no one has seen him. The same way you know and you have experienced oxygen in your life, but you have never seen it and you believe in the existence of uh, oxygen. We can know God even though we have never seen him. We can experience God even though we have never seen him with our eyes. Do you know God? You need an introduction to the Almighty God. Please don't be satisfied by having someone else consulting God on your behalf. Under the new covenant, you are allowed to have fellowship with the Almighty God. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You see, religion is the way of men looking for God. But under the new covenant, we are not looking for God. God is already standing at the door of our hearts. He is not waiting for you to start searching for him. There are still many religions today trying to find God. Our faith is advanced. It is already simplified for us. We are not the ones who searched until we found God. Instead, he found us. 
He was standing right there at the door of our hearts knocking. Sometimes we hear people saying, all my life I've been searching for God. Stop searching. Stop being religious. Christ is already standing at the door of your heart. He's knocking. It is not difficult to find God the way some people make us believe. God is not playing hide and seek with us. Our relationship with God does not depend on our skills of searching. How can we fail to find someone who's already knocking at the door of our hearts? Just open the door of your heart and let him in. Under the old covenant, prophets were the only voices available. The Bible was not even compiled at that time, so there was no reference to any other voice. Under the new covenant, personal prophecy confirm what God is already telling us. They confirm what we may be hearing, but we may be doubting. When a prophet is prophesying to a spiritually sensitive person, I mean that person who has learned to hear the still small voice, gets confirmation in their spirit. Personal prophecy is not a shock, it's a confirmation. Notice here in the Bible that it says, my sheep. That's how Jesus addresses us. He refers to us as my sheep. We are Jesus' sheep and nobody else's sheep. God has called the fivefold ministry to help us, to guide us, to teach us, to coach us, to encourage us, to motivate us, and so on and so on. That's why Jesus said to Simon Peter, Feed my sheep. We are God's sheep under the care of the fivefold ministry. Dear Pastor, be careful with those sheep. They belong to Jesus. Whose voice do you hear? Some of today's sheep have been trained to hear only one voice. They only hear the voice of Papa. Even if you can say to them, the Bible say, they say Papa said. This is the way they've been trained. They can't hear anything that Papa did not say. Even if it's already written in the Bible. This is not the way it's supposed to be. The Bible says all of us will know him from the very least of us. We will know him regardless of status. If you've been trained to hear Papa's voice so much that you can't even hear Jesus' voice, you need help. You belong to Jesus. He is your shepherd. He's your high priest. Go back to Jesus. Every child of God should not be a stranger to God's voice. Christ is our mediator, our middleman. Under the new covenant, we no longer have a Moses or a Joshua to hear God's voice on our behalf. We are connected to God himself through Jesus Christ. We are connected to the Father himself through our Lord Jesus Christ. John 10 verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. This whole Christian experience is about knowing Christ. The new covenant is about knowing God for ourselves. It is not about knowing a religious leader. Religious leaders are good for our coaching. They give us more knowledge about Christ so that we know him better. The more we hear about him, the better we know him. So let's continue to respect those who feed us with the word of God because they make us to know him better. 1 John chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. The new covenant is a covenant of love. Whoever knows God knows love. You cannot be in the presence of God and not experience love. John 13 verse 35, it says, by this will all people know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. God is love. Whoever comes into contact with God will have this one characteristic of God to prove that he knows God. The same way we cannot jump into a pool of water and come out dry. If we jump into the pool, we'll come out wet. Because that's what water does. It makes you wet. That's why you cannot come into the presence of God and not experience love, because he is love. As a new covenant believer, do you seek to hear his voice or are you happy to hear from everybody else? Don't you see that there are too many voices and too many contradictions? If you don't learn to hear God for yourself, you will be confused. 
there are many good men of God who are advising us, who are feeding us with the word of God. But we also need a confirmation in our spirits to differentiate the good men of God from all the scams that are there. Hey, if we don't know the difference, we are in trouble. There are too many doctrines. There are too many beliefs. You need to know from the confirmation of the Holy Spirit what is good for you. Listen to the still small voice from the inside of you. Under the old covenant, the children of Israel were confused most of the time because they had no direct connection with God himself. There was always a middleman. We have graduated to a better system under the new covenant. God wants to know you and he wants you to know him. It is that knowledge of him that will make you not struggle to know between fake and real. How many times will you go from one ministry to another looking for truth? How many times will you be deceived? How many times will you be lied to? It is time to know God. It is time you learn to hear from God. Have a wonderful, blessed day. This is Pastor Itani Madima from Limpopo Kingdom Restoration Church in Toyando, Marude Village.